Well, today I'm discussing cholebacillosis, diarrhea associated with E. coli that is naturally present in the pig's small intestine. This disease occurs in all small swine raising countries in a piglets one to three days through two to three weeks post weaning. What are the clinical signs of this disease? They usually have white or yellow diarrhea and wet straight tail. They have dehydration and they also have a stunt in their growth. As the disease progresses, the piglet's hair will turn rough and the temperature is often subnormal. Signs are most severe in younger pigs. Here we have a pig that looks fairly thin and very pale and is showing some scour. What is a good way to diagnose this disease? So since, since signs and lesions are useful but not definitive, the isolation of a uniform and high population of E. coli is suggestive of cholebacillosis. E. coli is present in the small intestine of healthy and diseased pigs. A microscopic examination is a good way to distinguish the significance of the disease. How do you treat cholebacillosis? There are antibiotics that help with the treatment of this disease, such as gentamicin, spectinomycin, septipure, also known as Nutcell. You should, of course, give supportive care by giving electrolytes to help with the dehydration and also transfer pigs so the rest of the litter does not get sick. How should you prevent this disease from affecting it? your herd greatly. Since E. coli quickly develops resistance to treatment, look for conditions that make pigs susceptible to disease. These are susceptible conditions. Lack of colostrum. Make sure piglets are getting enough colostrum, move them to a different cell, or give colostrum by hand. Temperature should not fall below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Insufficient milk. Make sure each piglet is getting an adequate amount of milk if the, pit, if the cell has too many piglets or not producing enough milk, move them to a cell that can provide enough. Build in dampness. Good sanitation reduces the number of bacteria the pigs are exposed to. Therefore, good managerial and husbandry practices are crucial in preventing this disease. Vaccinate cells with a bacterial PI, toxins, or both. And last of all, practice good biosecurity. Thank you so much for listening. Hope this was informative and interesting to you. That's all for today. Thank you.